Hello YouTube friends, Ben Ochart here. How are you? I'm in Nashville, Tennessee. But we're picking out our new home. We're moving from California to Nashville. So what is the one of the first things I do when I get down here? I got to check out the local PetSmart. Let's see if there's a difference between a PetSmart in California or in Mexico or here in Nashville, Tennessee. Let's go inside and take a look. Well, the first thing you notice when you walk in is the um, the size. I mean, compared to the shops that you run into in Los Angeles, I would say that this one is about two thirds the size, and that's you know that's to be expected. They're not they're not really servicing a population of pet keepers as dense as you'll find in the Los Angeles area. But overall, the store was well kept, well stocked. Everybody I ran into was very friendly. And the uh, brands, perhaps because of limited shelf space, was primarily the big brands. You know, your, your Top Fin, your API, you know, the kind of brands that uh, are more of the mass produced, more popular type brands that you see in the big shops. You didn't see really much or much that was exotic here. And uh, these nano tanks are pretty popular. Some of them were sold out. Not a bad way to get going. These are complete kits usually that include both filtration. I mean, really everything that you need. Not a bad price. You want to get a little beta tank going or maybe even have a quarantine tank. Fair selection of substrates both here and also in another section of the store that I'll show you in a second. Nice caves if you have Mabuna. Overall the decor selection was pretty good. I did notice that they had a, uh, a lot of large pieces. So their demographic survey must be revealing that there are some big tank owners in the area that wouldn't be, wouldn't be carrying such large pieces. Some of the younger decor, your SpongeBob uh, <laughs> type things, and uh, you know, water conditioners, water test kits. Again, a lot of API and top fin products. I didn't really see any exotic or high end foods. Certainly, no North Fin or even the Cobalt products here. They did have a limited selection of plants in those small little humidor tubes that they have, as well as uh, some plant food, and they did have some Seachem products in the plant food selection. A fair selection of uh, filter supplies, some canisters, a pretty good deal on an FX4 even though I have heard from some folks that have been able to catch an FX, uh, an FX6 on sale for about 230 bucks, but 209, that's not bad. A good selection of uh, large bags of substrate, again, for folks who have the, you know, 100 gallon on up, your 20 pound bags. I mean, that's really what you need. You need some of those. And they had a good selection of those. Everything from your basic gravel to aragonite, crushed coral, as well as cleaning supplies, and a selection of hang on back filters, including the Marine Land, which is a filter I run on the uh, 60 gallon. I've been very happy with it. 50 bucks seems to be the price you run into pretty regularly for that, for that filter. Some top fin hang on backs, as well as the Fluval seems to be a pretty popular filter now 100 bucks about twice the price of that marine land not sure if you'd get twice the uh, performance I'm not sure haven't used that hang on back the usual selection of uh, you know floor models here for the tanks they usually average between 40 and 75 gallons usually don't see very large tanks on display at these large box stores the big box stores again big pieces of decor kind of thing you'd put in the middle of a 200 gallon a few bow bowed bow front type tanks 
And these were probably the largest ones they had on display, getting up around your 75 gallon size. Uh, not a bad price on sale, around 300 out the door. That's for the, um, the lid, the light, the tank and stand sold as a set. Not, not too bad a price. I did like the price that they had on the 65 gallon just to the right here. More kind of a, a, a taller 65, but the tank, LED light, and stand 200 out the door. That's not a bad price. Good, how are you? Nice picture of a uh, nice painting of a betta here. Gets you into the fish section. They had a couple tanks of feeder fish. The ones on the left, for some reason, seem to be obsessed with the ones on the right. I don't know why. The ones on the right look, look kind of bored. <laughs> Overall, the uh, the tanks look in really good shape. Some nice little yellow labs here. I didn't really see any fish that... Uh, well, they had the bumblebee. That should come with a warning label. They didn't have any fish that uh, looked distressed or sick. I didn't see any fish with noticeable disease, disease on them, which made me feel a little better about the fact that they had a shared filtration system. I asked about the, uh, the filters on the tanks, and I was informed that there is one large sump-like system that where all the water of all the tanks circulates through small selection of uh, Mabuna. Nice colors. At about 10 bucks though, they seemed a little bit pricey. But maybe they're a little harder to get in the Nashville area. I did love the blue on these. I don't currently keep Mabuna. But the color on those is very, very pretty. And some koi Koi angelfish, which are probably my favorite angelfish. Love the uh, the orange, white, and black combination. If I had a Mabuna tank, I'd pick up some of those blue ones for sure. You can see overall the condition of the tanks is pretty good. The glass is clean. The substrate looks like it's getting vacuumed. Water quality looks decent. They had the glowfish, which. Uh, I mean, you know what I think about those. I think they're kind of a gateway fish. You know, if they get people in the hobby, it's a good thing. I mean, they are, they are, uh, the colors are definitely pretty. I can see the appeal. And they keep doing more and more genetic modification. And we'll, we'll probably end up with a glow variety of just about every fish. I mean, here they were, uh, they had the usual, the usual line of glowfish. But they also had some um, some variations of tiger barbs that had been turned into glowfish. And again, I think they do this with some type of genetic DNA alteration of some kind. There was a time way back when when they used to actually paint these fish, but they don't do that anymore, I understand. In other words, if they had, if they, uh, had fry, they would also glow. I like those panda platies, those are pretty. Some live bears. Some grummy, very popular. A few more live bears. And again, these are usually the fish that you'll see for uh, you know a first time a person just getting into the hobby. And that's really where these big box stores, I think, um, do a good job. I mean, they're a good place for a person to come in, you know, mom and dad come in to uh, get some dog food and, you know, little Jimmy falls in love with the fish and we've got a new fish keeper. So, you know, these, these stores do serve a purpose. Dollar ninety four. I don't know who comes up with these prices. $1.94 for some of these Tetras. Koi, I think, are beautiful. Very rugged. Very hardy fish. More Tetras. 
Uh, someone takes the time to actually set up these displays. Obviously, they have a manager over the department that really cares. That's obvious. Unfortunately, they had the usual beta torture chambers. This is the way you normally see them displayed in just about every store, including the smaller privately owned ones. Just hope someone buys them and puts them in a nice sized tank at some point. They even have better glowfish now. They never seem happy to me in these small containers. That's PetSmart here in Nashville. A little bit small as far as stores go, not quite the size of the one that I normally go to in California. Uh, the tanks were pretty clean, but they do share one filtration system. And that of course always makes me a little bit, uh, a little leery when I go to buy fish only because, uh, you know, if there's something going on in one tank, it's going to be going on in all the tanks. I did like the price of that 65 gallon setup at 199 bucks. I mean, picking up two or three of those wouldn't be a bad idea to get my fish room started here in Nashville. But uh, anyway, that's the tour. Hope you liked it. And uh, overall, I'd give this store, I would say maybe about an eight to nine. And only because the selection was a little bit sparse. Otherwise, everything was clean and well kept. And uh, you comment below. You tell me what you think about this store. All right. Thank you so much for tuning in. And I hope to see you again soon. Bye-bye.